Hello, it's Courtney with balancewithcourtney.com. I am passionate about helping others discover their happy and inspire them to make it a daily habit. My intention is to hack happy by interviewing experts to share their story and inspire others and create a happy movement. Today's happy expert is Ashley Strong. Ashley is the founder of Home Intentionally, a professional organizer, a coach, and most importantly, a mom of two toddlers. She's dedicated to helping families create more space in their homes, minds, and schedules. Over a year ago, she decided to see her postpartum depression anxiety as an opportunity and shift into thriving in her life and motherhood. Now she is passionate about helping other families create space so they can do what they love. Welcome, Ashley. Thank you for having me. Oh, I don't think you said anything that not every mother out there feels, and you today are going to support them and inspire them to do things a different way. I'm so excited for this interview. Well, thank you. Yes. So to start out, would you please share how you found your happy? Yeah. Um, so I had to find my happy through some challenging things. Um, you know, for some of us, you don't have to go into a bad place to get there, but for some of us, we need a wake up call and I'm one of those people. So for me, um, after the birth of my second son, uh, or my, my second child, my son, um, <laughs> I only, only have one son. Um, <laughs> I I found myself, I mean, really, we spent the 12 weeks of maternity leave, the three of us probably crying more often than we didn't. Um, being, you know, if I wasn't tearful, I was agitated, I was anxious, um, and just not in a good place. And one evening I was doing the, well, for us, it was a normal routine of going back and forth between bedrooms, um, my daughter's bedroom and my son's bedroom, because they're only 16 months apart. So they were taking turns getting up and I had fallen asleep in a toddler bed. Good thing I'm not a normal sized person. So <laughs> I had fallen asleep in her bed and woke up with a panic that I'm sure every mom, dad can relate to. Um, where he hadn't woken up for his normal feeding. Um, so I did what all, all moms do. And I ran to his bedside and I put my hand on his chest and it was a, you know, hot day in August. So we had the air conditioning going. So I just felt his cold hands and he was completely fine. But for that moment, it was honestly like his life flashed before my eyes. And all I saw in that instance was a, a sad life of me yelling, being anxious, agitated, tearful, mm -hmm. um, all the time. And I decided really in that moment that something had to change. And I didn't necessarily know what yet, but I knew something had to change. I knew that I need, I deserved better for myself. Mm -hmm. I, my kids deserved a better mom. My husband deserved a better wife. Um, everything was affected by my depression, our physical environment, our, my relationships, my work, every possible thing at this point. And so this was kind of one of those awakening, you know, a moment moments. And I, I got help. I had many people supporting me, many people helping me through it, but I decided to shift out of this, you know, place of this is depression, this is anxiety it has control over me and say, I'm going to use this as an opportunity. Mm. Something or multiple things are causing me to feel this way that are, are, are bringing me to this place where I am so stressed and so, you know, that it, just not me. Mm -hmm. um, and in that, what I decided to do was start changing things. So anything in my life that caused me stress, I got rid of or changed in some way from the biggest to, you know, thing to the smallest things like, you know, and so for me, I am naturally an organizer. So my physical space was, was the number, number one for me. Mm -hmm. um, our physical environments impact our mental health and ultimately um, can impact our, our physical being as well. So that's where I started. And we, anything that did not serve my family, I got rid of. Um, 
and it, le- having just less stuff. And then at that point, I was so overwhelmed. I'd gone back to work. So I was so overwhelmed with trying to be a mom, trying to do my best at work, trying to maintain our home, you know, trying to do all of the things. Um, and I created a strategy in our home for mm-hmm. organizing, for maintaining it. Um, all of those things. And for me, everyone has a threshold, but for me, when my physical environment is cluttered, I'm cluttered. I, I, my brain feels cluttered. I don't Mm -hmm. think as well. So I really started there and that gave me the space then to move on to other things. Um, that started to feel good. So then it was moving on to my schedule and getting rid of things that didn't serve me, that were other people's expectations and, and really setting boundaries and using my voice to communicate what I needed. Mm -hmm. Um, And then it was a lot of the mindset issues. I mean, kind of once I started letting go of the physical things and letting go of expectations, it, it, it kept going. Um, you know, it, you, it gave, I got a little bit stronger every day and a little bit more willing to get rid of things that just didn't serve me that caused me stress. And, you know, I reflect each day at the end of the day. And if I had a stressful moment, or something that caused me stress, whether it's something like, I really want a phone charger next to the sofa when I come home at the end of the day, (laughs) because my phone is going to be dead and inevitably I'm going to have to get up and figure out where I moved it last. Yeah. Um, And, you know, it's something that's so little, but it was, it it had an impact one way or another. It it cost my time. um, It cost my energy. And it was something that to me didn't make sense to waste energy or time on. So I came up with a solution. Um, so really focusing on there's an issue. How can I fix it? Yes. How can I make it better for me? I absolutely loved that story. And it is amazing. Really. I honor you that Mm -hmm. in a place of so much sadness to be able to say, okay, today I am going to start eliminating the things that are causing me stress. That Mm -hmm. is huge. You know, and the more that we eliminate the stressful things, the more room we have for the joyful things. Yeah. And then every day you see a little bit of joy and a little bit of joy and you start Mm -hmm. bringing more and more. So it is a process. And, you know, I call them happy habits, but it's replacing those habits, the things we're doing every day that are not serving us, but for some reason we keep doing them and replace them the things that do serve us, that do bring us joy. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. So can I ask you a question? When Mm -hmm. you, what do you think was the underlying cause of the sadness you were feeling? Yeah. What was that? You know, that's been something I've really been, even to this day, trying to gather um, Mm -hmm. all of the pieces because it wasn't, it honestly wasn't, it, it wasn't obvious to me at that point. I just knew I was really sad. Yeah. Um, and I was, I was sad and I was tired and, and I just, I wasn't the person I wanted to be. And the more and more I dig into it, the more and more I try to figure out how I got there. Mm -hmm. Um, there's, there's a lot of different reasons, but I think the biggest kind of theme to all of them is I wasn't being true to myself. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I hadn't been true to myself for a long time with things from, you know, work to, you know, where I was in my career path and to uh, unresolved issues, you know, things that caused me stress or pain Mm -hmm. that I just kept burying and telling myself, you know, if you, if you just don't worry about it, just keep pushing through. And that's what I did. I kept pushing through pain through sadness through any challenges that I had had in my entire life and just kept moving on with them but not actually resolving them not actually ever checking in with myself and saying what do I need and when I stripped away other people's expectations Mm -hmm. when I stripped away and really had to work at um, mindset issues behind my fear of failure I had to Mm -hmm. figure out where that came from to and work through that to overcome it. Right. Right. To, and to, to change that voice in my head that was saying you, you, you're a failure and you will fail at this. Um, to, to be okay with me saying, I always imagined a career in healthcare because that makes sense based on my gifts. And to say, 
you know what, it doesn't make sense anymore and that's okay. And I have gifts, but I don't, they don't have to be tied to my career. Mm. I can use these gifts any time of any day in any place. Um, and letting go of some of those just self expectations and just things that I had built up, um, you know, all of just kind of letting go of all of that Mm -hmm. is it's, it's kind of the same process, you know, that I took in decluttering my physical space, but decluttering some of those old habits, those old thought patterns, those old things that were hanging out in there for how long (laughs) that I had just never worked through that I didn't realize were impacting me. And now when those thought patterns or those voices come up, you know you need to take more self-care or you need to put yourself first a little bit. It's a great sign for those of us that have hit the point where we had to make a change. Mm -hmm. When we start to feel that point again, when we get triggered, then we know that we need to take some self-care. Yes. Yes. And so it's almost like a superpower. You can look at it that way. Yes, exactly. It, it, it is. And, and it's, I, you know, I remember when I first started kind of my self-care journey and everybody says, you know, to meditate and that, that, that's great. And I am someone in Courtney, you know, this. my brain is always moving and hmm. I, you know, I, I wake up and my brain is going and my mind is going and I fall asleep the same way. Not so much anymore. Um, but the idea of being quiet and being still, sounded like the most insane thing. And I remember thinking (laughs) like, there's, there's no way that I am going to be quiet with myself. And why should I turn my brain off? That seems ridiculous. Right, right. And I remember really trying to work at it and it was really challenging. But um, there was a moment, a few, probably maybe six months into it, where I was sitting outside and um, I wasn't necessarily meditating. I was just kind of working on being in the moment. And it was one of those moments where everything was just really clear. And you noticed every detail about the leaves and the wind and all of these things. And I was just so aware of myself and my surroundings and where I was and the thoughts that were coming into my mind. And I went, oh, this is why we meditate. Mm this is why I'm working all the time at being in the moment. This is what truly being in the moment feels like. Mm -hmm. Um, And I've never looked back when I'm feeling my, my brain go a mile a minute and I'm feeling myself think of all the what ifs and I'm thinking of, you know, what might happen in 10 years or whatever it is. um, Cause that's how my brain works. They, those, those things still come up for me. Um, And so that's my time to say, okay, I really need to recenter. I really need to bring myself back to what we're doing today, not what I might be doing 10 years from now. Yes. Yes. So will you define what being happy means to you? Mm, Yes. So when I think of being happy, I just, I think of living in my own truth. Oh, it's beautiful. Um, You know, living the life that I want, living with intention, um, and, and my intentions, right? Not necessarily what someone else might think my life should look like or what a working mom looks like or what having a business looks like or, or any of those things. Um, but me designing the life that I want, communicating that with those around me, mm. listening to those around me, especially the people that mean the most to me, my, my you know, my spouse, my kids, understanding what they want for, you know, in their lives, in their home, whatever, and working together to create that intention and mm-hmm. setting those souls goals and, and just living in the freedom of our own creation, mm-hmm. our own life, our own limits, our own expectations of, of how we want to feel. Yeah. And then building everything else around that. Beautiful. Beautiful. How do you maintain your happy and can make mm-hmm. it as a daily habit, something you feel every day? Yes. Um, I have a non-negotiable period in the morning. <laughs> that is my time. Yes. Now, ideally, 
it is a, you know, it is an hour. Um, but anybody with little kids around knows that, or who has had little kids around or anything like that, <laughs> that uh, even the best laid intentions, someone might get up. And right. um, so I have contingencies around that. And even if I wake up late or I'm running behind, I, I do a self check and say, nope, I'm going to take 15 minutes today and take 20 minutes today. I'm going to meditate. I'm going to whatever it is. Um, I involve the kids. If they're up early, you can sit with me and meditate. You can sit with me and do some deep breathing. Um, or you can have some breakfast and, and, you know, watch a show, Mm -hmm. but this is, this is my time and, and letting them know that I need that time. And then I like to start my day off like that. I like to end my day in a positive place. I like to end it with meditation. I like to end it thinking about all the joy that the next day is going to bring me and all the joy and things that I received that current day. Mm -hmm. And then throughout the day, I do a check, check in with myself and I listen to what my heart is telling me. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes I give it to myself. If I feel like I need to take a walk, I'm going to take a walk. Um, even if that means getting up from my desk, um, you know, I'm going to take a walk. If I'm in a meeting and feel like I need a couple minutes, I might just close my eyes for a second and take some deep breaths. Um, but I build it in. Obviously, we can't always leave work or, or certain situations. But um, if I know that I need a few minutes with myself, I give myself that, no mm-hmm. matter what that might look like. Um, if I'm feeling like I need a day off, I'm overwhelmed, I take it. And, you know, or an afternoon or, or whatever it is, um, drink that hot cup of coffee by yourself, ask for help, communicate with those around you. Um, my husband and I are getting really good at just saying, I need five minutes. So I'm going to go, <laughs> I'm going to go outside, um, and trying to, you know, give that to each other whenever we need that, because it's important. Yes. Um, so just, yeah, just little things that make up and it, they make a big difference. Yeah, little me breaks throughout mm-hmm. your day. You know, I think of it as drinking water. When we're mm-hmm. thirsty, we grab water. But when our yep. body needs us, our minds need us, our soul needs us, we ignore it and push it off. I don't have time. I don't have time. Mm-hmm. And before you know it, you end up needing a whole day to recover. Yep. So if we can take those mini breaks, then we don't come to the point where we just need to check out. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So with that, when, say you wake up in the morning and, you know, you're just not your best self. It's things mm-hmm. just aren't going your way. How do you get back into alignment? What do you do differently that day? Yeah. Um, when I'm feeling that and I'm feeling those, those feelings of anxiety, maybe of agitation of whatever it is, um, I pause immediately and I say, okay, Ashley, things are not going well. We don't want to do this all day. Mm-hmm. What do you need? Mm, I love that. I say it out loud. Sometimes it's, you know, inside, but it's, what do you need? Mm-hmm. And I give myself a few minutes to say, okay, I really need to sit down for a minute and start over. I need to take some deep breaths. I need to do 10 minutes of yoga, whatever it is. Um, and sometimes it's, it changes, but just giving myself that time and honestly, even on days where I'm running late or things are a little bit crazy, giving myself that 10 minutes, we leave the house at the same time because it's, it's not otherwise it is, I'm flying into their rooms and we got to get up. We got to get up. We got to go. We got to go. Why, you know, why are you dragging your feet? Come on. Where's your, where's your shoes? What are we doing? Um, and they don't, they, everyone around you feels that anxiety. And that, oh gosh, yes. You know, that doesn't start their days off well they're often going to fight me (laughs) because they're like, I don't know why you're acting like a crazy person, but I'm just trying to wake up. Yeah. Um, I want to have a good day. Right. Yeah. (laughs) I don't know what happened to you the last hour, but I'm just trying to wake up. Um, you know, my husband's the same way. You know, if I start running around like a tornado and yelling and acting crazy, um, it doesn't heed any better results and it starts all of us off in a bad place. And then often we end in a bad place. So it's really just understanding that it's for me, but it also affects everybody around me. 
And if it's 10 minutes to reset, let's take it. Yeah. It's so interesting how it's so hard, especially us as women to put ourselves first, Mm -hmm. but it's so easy to take down others with us. Yes. You know what I mean? It's hard for us to just pause and say, how am I going to affect other people in this energy I'm in? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So once again, putting ourselves first is benefiting everyone around us. Your Mm -hmm. kids love it when you come in and you wake them up slowly and you take your time and they don't feel rushed. Your husband loves it when you're not running around crazy and yelling or whatever happens, right? Right. Right. But that's what we do. We're like, no, I'm feeling this way. Everyone around me is going to feel this way. Right. Well, and yet, or we don't even realize the impact that we're making, that our, that our actions make. It's just, I need to suck it up and I need to do these things and this is what I need to do. And I have these things on my list and I woke up late and, you know, whatever is, <laughs> that self-talk is really loud sometimes. Mine's very dramatic. Yeah. And, you know, all of that's going and we're not taking five seconds to say, well, <laughs> you know are these thoughts that are swirling through your mind true? You know, is, is it really that big of a deal? You know, or like, you know, or thinking about, Hey, you're, you're stressed out and angry, but that doesn't necessarily mean everybody else needs to be. Right. Take a deep breath. And at once it's, it's a practice. Um, It definitely takes a while to build up that awareness to say, whoa, you're, you're running around yelling at everybody again. You need to, what's going on with you? Uh, (laughs) Likely not them, (laughs) you know, where's Uh, mama's happy, right? What what happened today? Let's, let's reset. Um, You know, and, and there are one of our favorite things to do during the day when everybody's up and and going and if I'm having a bad day or the kids are having a bad day or whatever we've got got all the crankies in us um is to put on our favorite song and do a dance party oh dance it off yes and we just take that couple minutes and dance it out and we are love it we're good to go it's I mean (sighs) it's and it, it resets them. It resets me. You get a little energy out. Mm-hmm. I'm sure the neighbor thinks I'm crazy because, of course, they don't see the little people dancing around. They just see me like, <laughs> aggressively stretching in the kitchen. And they're but you bring in them joy because they're laughing, right? <laughs> right. They're really like, who is this crazy girl in her kitchen that's always, I think she's dancing. Maybe she's doing some aerobics. Uh. Yeah. So I just, we just bring joy to, to people when we're doing our crazy dancing, but it helps. We laugh, we dance, we, you know, and sometimes that's all it takes. Yes. I love it. Movement is medicine for sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, this has been so wonderful. You've gave us so many tips to help support our happiness and just, you know, to get back on track when we're not feeling so good yeah. and make it a daily habit. Absolutely. So before we go, is there anything else you want to share with others out there that are really struggling right now to find their happy? Yeah. Um, it, you have to ask for help. And it's really hard to ask for help. Yeah. I don't know why, um, but it is. And you can't do it alone. You shouldn't do it alone. Um, so don't, don't suffer in silence, ask for help, whether it's from a friend, whether it's from Courtney, whether it's from a therapist or your physician, a spouse, whoever it is, just say something Yeah. and, and make that space, make that time for you to get better. Um, it's not selfish. It is, it is an act of love for you. Mm-hmm. It is what's best for your family. Um, it's not going to be easy, but you have to do it. Yes, you, you do. You have to do it for you and for everyone around you. Yes, you do. Mm. Thank you so much, sweetheart. Mm. So how can others reach out to you and what do you have going on? Yeah. Um, so through all of, all of this work that I have done, I want to share it. Um, my goal for this year is to help 500 families. Wow. 
make space in their their homes, their schedules, their minds, mm. um, just for more, for more joy, for time in the moment, just strengthen themselves, their relationships, all the things. Mm. Um, and that's that's where I get energy. It brings me so much joy to help other people and to use my gifts. So um, that's that's where I am at. Um, you can find me at homeintentionally.com. And I have blog articles with anything from organization tips to schedule tips to um, mindset things, especially for the tired mama. Mm -hmm. And um, I have a couple of courses launching in April. So those will be out and ready to go April 8th. Um, so if you're listening and you want to check those out, please check those out. You can find all that information at homeintentionally.com. And if you just want to spend some more time with me, hang out, learn some things, um, you can join me in our Facebook group, Home Intentionally. Um, you can find me on Instagram, Home Intentionally. Pretty much search Home Intentionally anywhere. I try to make it simple and easy. You will find me there. Um, otherwise, I'm also in the Happy Balance group with Courtney. So you can find me there as well. Um, and I'm happy just to answer your questions, to give you as much support you need on your journey. Um, I know that for me, uh, for a while, it was podcasts and yeah. um, things like that that brought me a lot of comfort before I was ready to really talk about some of this stuff, um, listening to other people that had overcome amazing things and came out stronger and that gave me a lot of hope so I am here for you no matter what season of life you're in um, I'm here to help you create that space yes that's so beautiful you made me think of something I um, am creating my course as well right now and one of my happy habits is to talk less and listen more and I think so much when we're struggling we just want to vent constantly but when we can listen to a podcast or listen to other people's stories it answers so many questions for us and we feel validated like oh my gosh other people have these things I am not I'm suffering not alone. alone yes yes so, so beautiful. So thank you for bringing that up. It's really important. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, please hang on. I'd love to chat after this interview. Sounds good. Thank you for taking time for us and for your growth. I hope you discovered new habits to support your happiness. Please reach out with questions or if you need more support at Happy Balance Facebook group or balancewithcourtney.com. If you need one-on-one -on -one inspiration and support, please book a happy call. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you.